All right, so I'm just gonna dump a little bit of gear oil down in here, just to kind of help it out. Never hurts to have it pre-lubricated. And this is also a really good idea on the wheel bearings because I've been told it takes one mile of driving for the fluid to reach the outer bearings. So with this nice and, and lubed up, the next thing we're going to install is the crush sleeve. Okay, this is a new crush sleeve, so we're going on our final install here. Okay, and then you, we're just going to reach it right up through the middle of the housing. Very carefully, make sure that you don't catch this oil slinger. Okay, and then the next thing, can you get me the flange? Silver, shiny, round thing. Thank you. Okay, so the next we have our flange, and I've cleaned all these parts the best that I can. Okay, the flange comes down and sets in just like that. Push it on the best that you can, but we're going to use pretty much the pinion nut to get it started and start driving it down. Okay, so I'm going to continue to apply pressure, have a friend apply pressure from beneath, and you know maybe we'll give it a few light taps with a hammer on the sides and then just slowly crank this down. So, as my friend is holding the pinion upward, I'm lightly tapping on the new flange and then tightening the pinion nut. So as we work it all the way down, if this part is used, it might slide on a lot easier. These, this is all new hardware. But uh, as we work it down, eventually the pinion is going to be tight enough where we're going to be able to wiggle this back and forth and feel if there's any slop left. And that's when we'll go to torquing it down. Alright, so what we're doing now is we're tightening down the pinion nut. And so we've put two bolts in here. There's a lot better way of doing this. You can also just cut a new bar that will go down. These will bolt into. And then we're just tightening this down. Okay, it's taking a lot. It's going to take about 200 or more foot pounds to crush the crush sleeve. And so we're just going to tighten it up until we don't hear any more slop in it. And then we're going to need to check for 20 inch, inch pounds of rotational drag, meaning we're going to put a breaker bar on here and we're going to turn it and it should take 20 inch pounds to keep it turning. Okay, that's called preload and that means you're loading the bearings up. Okay, so listen to this. Okay, you can hear that it's still loose and we're basically going to want to tighten it until there isn't much of that in it left and then check the preload. But be careful on the preload because you can come up to it but you can't go back. If you get it too tight you need to put a new crush sleeve on there. Okay, now here we're using a dial inch pound torque wrench. This is different than the clicker or it's a little bit better than the, than the beam style ones as well. As you can see, we have, we're looking for our preload to be 16 to 25 to 29 is what they say. And we're setting this one, the needle looks like it's even off maybe a little bit until you start to put some pressure on it. But we're setting it at about 25 just to kind of know our, our ballpark number. And so you can see now as we're rotating it, okay, we have rotational it's drag on there. And we have it just right about where we want it. Okay, we, we have it right on our mark. And this is something that after you've done it for a while, you can, you can do it by feel, um, I'm sure. We, but it's, it's a little bit hard to turn. There's a little bit of pressure there. So a little bit of drag. So that's, that's 20 inch pounds. You can also put a clicker on it, a clicker style torque wrench to double check it. Well, this is supposed to be about as accurate as it gets. This is a precision tool is the brand and it was close to two hundred dollars.
All right, so what we're doing here is we're screwing in these studs. They replace the, um, the end cap bolts. And so we just put a little Loctite on them. We're just tightening them down. They have a little Allen type uh, head on them. And we're just gonna get them good and snug in here. So then when we put in the carrier and the put on our end caps, then there's actual nuts that go over these studs instead of just the regular ones. All right, so we're gonna get these gears cleaned up really good, the ring gear and the pinion. Just wanna get some brake parts cleaner and clean everything on it. Same with the carrier, um, just be careful. It's probably not a good idea to get some any of the, the uh, cleaner down in here. So we're just gonna do this part with a rag by hand. As for the ring gear, just gonna get it good and clean and ready to go. Okay, so now we're gonna install the ring gear to the actual carrier. So as you can see, we're just gonna lift up, align the holes, and put on the bolts. Okay, we're just gonna put a drop of uh, the thread locker on here. So we started putting in some of these ring gear bolts just to make sure that they were threaded. We still have a little bit of a gap here. But one thing that's important, do not um, tighten these bolts to draw these two together. Make sure that you, we're gonna flip it back over and with a rubber mallet, we're gonna lightly pound and get it nice and uh, flush again. All right, so we're just putting these on hand tight now with a 5 8 socket. And we're just doing the star pattern, getting them snug. Okay, so now we're going to torque down the ring gear bolts. You can do it with a with a gun, an impact gun, but we're going to do it by hand with a breaker bar. So we've rigged this up, kind of the backyard mechanic style. We put the axle shaft in there, and then up top we're going to have the actual wheel so that we can hold it up top and torque it down low. All right, so I just torqued these all down. As you noticed, you can see I've put a little mark over each one that I've done and I'm just doing the star pattern these two these two these two these two then the last ones and so I'm torquing them down first at 45 or 50 pound feet and then I'm moving it up to 75 or 80 for the final and that way it's just even it has the lock the thread locker on it and it's good and tight alright so what we have here are our bearings for the carrier that we had pressed on we have our races for that that we're sliding on here and inside the housing we have our shims you can see where his fingers are now these are the factory shims that were taken out so that's our starting point so the same ones that were on the driver's side are on the driver's side and the same with the passenger so now we're just going to drop this entire carrier in alright now these are the the bearing main caps and traditionally what you have are the bolts that go down and go into the housing but we actually got an aftermarket stud kit right here you can see we've just put the studs in first and so those replace those bolts and the end caps go over here remember they're machined by side so the driver's side has to stay on the driver's side and the passenger on the passenger side and they have arrows that are pointing towards the outside of the axle so make sure you keep these separated and on the right side. Now on these ones they have a washer and then also the little nuts. So um, one thing other to mention, as we're tightening all this down, we're going to be using these to kind of get the carrier nice and snug in the housing. It's almost all the way there but we want to make sure that it's even so we're going to watch the thread the threads on this and make sure that one side is not going down before the other
All right, so right now I'm tightening down these end caps, the bearing caps, and I'm just being careful to do them kind of the same, a few turns here, a few turns here, and then all the way around so it's kind of even. Okay, we're just torquing these down to the about 80 foot pounds on these main caps. Should be about 77 if you're just doing the, the regular bolts instead of the studs. And so now we're going to check the backlash. Alright, so we have the dial indicator set up and what this is going to do is measure the backlash or how far the gear moves forward, you know, from one position to the other. And you want to have 8 to 12 thousandths movement. So right now we're all the way over and as I push it back the other way, we're right about at the 8 thousandths mark. So I think that's pretty good, especially if it loosens up a little bit, you never know. But we're looking like we're right. All right, so we have our gears in. We're checking it with the dial indicator. And it's right on nine thousandths. Eight thousandths. Eight, eight and a half. Eight and a half. Ford wants anywhere from eight to twelve. So we're right in our right in our range. Okay, so what we're doing here is painting a few of these ring um, ring gear teeth on the convex side and then we're going to turn the pinion nut or the pinion side until it contacts with the pinion gear and then we'll be able to know where the two gears are contacting. We'll be able to look at our pattern and know if uh, we need to make any adjustments. All right, so you can see here as we we ran it over, once it got to the ring gear or to the pinion, we turned the yoke back and forward a few times to get a good impression. So you can see it's it looks like it's pretty good. It's uh, wearing right in the middle of the gear. And, yeah. All right, this is the pattern we got. You can see it's uh, pretty well centered on the spacing. So we're pretty happy with that. We did have to take it out a few times to get that right. Um, if it 